We need to pick that piece of leader and we're going to snell it. So what I do is I take the leader, I run it through the eye of the hook, if I can, sometimes it takes me a while. Are we watching again? Yeah. I wind it through the eye of the hook like this, then I grab it at the back of the hook and hold it up against the hook and I just bring this piece up to the front and I wrap three, four, five, six times and then I bring it through that loop that I made by when I turn that back. So I run it through there. Then I take this front one and I pull it tight, pull the back one tight, and there's a snelled hook. Now the reason you want a hook snelled is it'll keep the hook straight. If you put, if you just tied a leader to that and you put it out as a stinger hook, it could get bent out to the side and everything instead of staying straight out. A snell will keep it straight out. Now on the fly that I'm going to show you, if you want to use different size hooks at different times, then you won't even make a snelled hook. You'll just take a piece of braided, 20-pound uh, braided uh, spinning line, and you'll just make a loop and hang it out the back of the fly, and then, then you just run it through the eye of your hook and then run the hook on, and you got whatever size hook you want back there. So anyway, the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll do that. Then the next thing, we'll take the 2461, that take the barb hook. off, that's your black hook. That's a size two. I make these in twos, ones, and one aughts. Okay, now I'm going to take some, uh, this is a gel spun thread. I'm going to start right at the front, and I'm going to wind all the way back to the point. The point. Not the barb, remember the point. We're working with the point of the hook now. Okay, then I'm going to take a little super glue and put on there because I, I don't like the slipperiness of gel spun, spun thread. I want to make sure this fly stays the way I put it. Okay, now I'm going to bring the thread back up to the front. I'm going to take whatever I decided on for my body material. And I'm going to tie it in right at the front. So I come up like this. Then I bring my thread back like this and I just wind right from the eye, just build up a body. And I stop at the point. That body stops at the point. The reason I emphasize that, if you don't get it that way, you're not going to get a fly that does what it's supposed to. Okay, now I've got it to the point. Then I'm going to take that piece of uh, foam that you were given. I don't even have one out for myself yet. <clears throat> now you can buy these in kits at different places, or you can get them from direct from Larry Tullis, or you can make your own. But you don't use the kind of foam you buy in the hobby shops and stuff. It's not stiff enough. This is the kind of foam they make sandals and stuff out of. And he cuts these out on band saws, and he cuts a, a block, and he cuts them, then cuts it at an angle like that. So put it a little lower so it's in the camera. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. They're all cut on a band saw. Huh. Okay. You use different sizes for different size hooks. If I was using a one aught hook, I've got a bigger, wider one to use. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bodkin, and I'm going to measure the gap of the hook. Now I like to go usually just a little more than the gap, and I measure it like that. Then I come to the top of this piece of foam with that tapered side underneath, and I get that measurement right on top. And that's where I'm going to punch a hole. But I'm going to punch a hole at a 45 degree angle, coming this way. Does that make sense? Bring it down a little bit. It's not on the screen. Okay. I'm going to punch that hole at a 45 degree angle, like this. The same but practical angle as that is at the lip. But I gotta make sure it comes out at the center. So I turn it over. Just get my needle back in there. Turn it over and I try to come out right exactly in the center. If it isn't in the center, then I'll go back and redo it. You see how that goes? Now you can use a nail or something to do this, but you need to make that hole a little bigger. So I just take my bodkin and I just do that to it. 
Okay, then I take this and I come up to the eye of the hook and I take that hole from the back and I slide that through until that eye of that hook comes out like that. Then I just get that out of the roll because, boy, I tell you, these flies, fish will hit them. Okay, I put a little super glue right at the front. And I know Larry, when he makes them, he just does the front and back, but I like to do it all the way along the body. A little super glue. I bring this back around, and I line it straight up on the top of the hook, and I come around and I make a looser turn to start to pull it, and then get tighter and tighter. And then I come back <clears throat> towards the bend like this until I've got a little shelf in there but it starts right at the point of the hook. Okay, now after I get that in, get that lined up, everything straight, I bring my scissors right against the butt of the hook and cut that off. Now save that. Boy, if you ever make any boobies or anything with them, these make great eyes on them. Okay, so the next thing I do is I take my scissors and I take this piece of foam and I push down on it like this and I cut a little groove in it like that. Now if you're not going to use a stinger hook you just set your marabou in there. With a stinger hook what I like to do is I like to set the hook right in there. So I measure that the way I want it. Let's see I want it to be I got too much here so I'll just have <coughs> all that. I'm going to set it, oh, about right there like that. Then I'm going to lightly go over it because this monofilament will roll on you. So I want to get it in place before I put any tension. And I cinch it down. And then I take this front part and I loop it. Bring that over the top. Just slide that through till I've got it wrapped down going two ways. What if you wrap that around when you tie it in? Then loop it. Does that make it more secure? I doubt it. Yeah. Okay. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take some of the marabou, and it's so hard to find decent marabou, but I got some here that'll work. I've got the best black and olive and brown marabou you can buy but I bought pounds of it at a time when I could get it. I've got strung marabou that's this long with big long fibers on it. Well you try to buy that kind of stuff anymore and you can't find it any place. Now I want this marabou to be about the length of the fly so I cut it off and then because I got so much stuff going back there I take the butts of this marabou and I pull out all of this fuzz because so I don't want it to take up so much space. So I get all of this out, and I tie it down, right? The first one right in the center, like that. Okay, I'll do about two of those, like I said, not enough on that one feather. So I'll do about two of these, and then I'm going to put sparkle on it. Now these flies, if, you, if you've got my books, if you... If, in my second book, I've got one of these in there. I've got doll eyes and everything on it. You can really doll them up or you can use t-shirt paint and put eyes on them, but I found out that the eyes don't make any difference. They so come, for off, the, come off after the first fish. No, they don't come off very often, but I'll tell you what, that if I'm making them to sell, I'll put eyes on Because, <laughs> you know, makes it worth it. Makes it worth the money they pay, but uh, for fishing myself, I don't put them on. They don't hold up on the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> right? I made one of these for Rick. I gave it to him, and he was at work, and he put it in his smock and <laughs> forgot where it was and went through the washing machine. He couldn't understand why the hook wouldn't stay straight out. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take some crystal flash. And I don't think it really matters what color you use. In fact, for a long time, I didn't think it mattered even if you used it because I still caught fish. But uh, Larry Tullis says he's noticed a difference.
whether there's flash on there or not, he catches more fish with the flash. So just put a little bit of flash on there. Let's catch that right there. One thing I didn't do that I usually do when I first put that monofilament on, I usually put a little super glue and I didn't this time. But you should put some super glue right over the top of it just to make it reinforced. Okay, then then you cover this up. Now for fishing, I'd stop right now. For selling, I want to get most of this stuff down. Of course, I'm not selling flies. I used to, I tied flies for on your hook. Huh? You want a thread on your hook. Okay. Thank you. When I tied for blue ribbon, I used to tie over a thousand dozen a year. And I've got to the point now where if, if I got to do it for money, I just, it gives me the chills to think about it. Okay, then I'm taking whip finish this right there. 